What's up guys? It's John. Hey, I've been messing around with my Line 6 Pod HD 500X and I've been delving into some new waters with it. I've been kind of messing around with some ambient guitar tones. I've come up with some settings that uh, I think are pretty cool and I want to share it with you. Now keep in mind this video is going to be just like an introduction to ambient guitar tones. Uh, with the 500X, okay? So uh, we'll just keep it simple, keep it real basic uh, for this video, but uh, let's check it out. So I'm sitting at my computer here. I do have a guitar, you probably can't see it, but it's right in my lap, and then next to me is my 500X. Now I am running a USB cable from the 500X to my computer so that I can access the Line 6 uh, 500X edit software that you see on the screen here. Now, this software is really awesome, and so if you have a 500X, or really any of the Pod HDs, uh, you need to use this software, because it's so helpful. Uh, to get it, it's totally free. Just go to Line6's website, uh, you go in the support section, and you kind of have to use these, uh, you have to search for it. So there's these little drop-down uh, tabs, and you just do like software, and then you look for the 500X, you select it, and then uh, it'll show you all the software that you can download. There's like manuals you can download. Um, just look for 500X Edit. And they have that for the other ones in the series too, the 300, the 400, and the 500. You'll get something that you see here on the screen. And what this does is it lets you just use your mouse on your, on your computer to be able to actually like select the different effects. And you can like visually see things a lot easier than trying to do it by hand just on a little tiny screen on the actual 500X. And uh, let's get into it. So when I'm creating tones, usually the first thing I do is I pull in an amp model. So uh, just go to the amps tab here, amp model. Here we can see everything, right? So I'm gonna scroll to the very beginning. I'm just gonna use a Fender Twin Reverb. It's kind of a go-to amp for me. Just pull that guy right in here. It's a really quiet amp, so I crank the channel volume all the way up. The drive, I'm just gonna leave it exactly where it is. So let's kind of hear how this tone is sounding. Okay, that's a clean tone, just a twin reverb. Now, this is where I'll start throwing in effects. Um, okay, so ambient tones. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's ambient guitar is like just really ethereal, atmospheric kind of guitar playing. Okay, so lots of reverb and delay. But before we get to all the reverb and delay and all the fun stuff, we kind of got to put in some boring stuff. We'll throw in, let's do a volume pedal right away. Um, it always likes to put the volume pedal on expression pedal two, because I guess that's what's selected. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come over to my 500X, I'm gonna shove down on the volume pedal, make it switch to expression pedal one. Then if I go here to controllers, this is a little tricky, a little convoluted, but under model, uh, I can select the volume pedal, and now it's gonna tell me all the parameters that that volume pedal um, you know, is controlling or is controlled by. If I go to controller, it's gonna tell it expression one, boom. Now it's controlled by this expression one. Not a big deal, but I like to keep my volume pedal on expression one, and any of my wah pedals or whatever on expression two. Okay, that's good. Probably set that for none as well. Okay. So now we have this nice volume pedal. Make sure it works. Okay, good there. Then the next thing that I'm gonna add is a compressor. Now it's up to you if you wanna put your compressor before the volume pedal or compressor after the volume pedal. There is a slight difference, it's up to you. I'll let you experiment on your own. I usually go for the red compressor. This is like a, an MXR Dynacomp. It's kind of the most intense compressor as well. Um, but I think for this ambient stuff, let's just do the blue compressor. I think that they're trying to show a, a Boss Blues driver, maybe? Or a Boss compressor there. And I'm just gonna leave the stock settings. So here's what the guitar tone sounds like without the compressor. That's like medium strumming. And then let's add the compressor and I'm still gonna strum mediumly. Kinda hear how the guitar tone is like more in your face. The compressor really boosts all the quiet stuff and it kinda brings down um, the loud stuff and creates a more even 
um, guitar signal. It does sound louder though because it also boosts the output. So it kind of squishes the tone, like it brings down the loud stuff and brings up the quiet stuff. And then takes that signal and then boosts it up even more. And you can control how much it boosts it with this level. And then you can control like how much of the squashiness with the sustain. I usually just keep all my, the compressor settings just stock because I feel like as soon as I start messing with it, um, it kind of makes the guitar a little more unnatural sounding. So I'm just gonna leave that stuff stock. Now that's all the boring stuff. So let's do delay and reverb now. Uh, for these guys, generally my delay and reverb are the last things in the chain. And just for the sake of, you know, allowing some future customize, customizing, uh, I'm just gonna put them in these last two slots. So second to last slot, I'm gonna throw in my delay. So I go to the light tab. Isn't this super nice, like this editor software? Oh, it's so handy. So much more easy than using the little screen. Um, and then for the model, you know, when you're doing ambient stuff, all the delays are gonna sound awesome. They're, they're each gonna have their own, you know, unique quality to them. But for this, let's do the analog delay. Uh, it looks like they're doing a model of the, uh, like a memory man, the old school deluxe memory man. We could also do the analog delay with the modulation, which sounds really cool too. Uh, let's just keep it simple. Just do the standard analog delay. Analog delay sound really nice. Um, I, I think that they sound very natural. They almost have a lo-fi quality to them because as the repeats go, they start to break up, get a little darker, and the signal kind of dissolves which I like a lot, um, but it's up to you what you want to do. So here's the delay. And it's giving us those repeats, those trails there. Let's mess with these settings a little bit. Let's turn the feedback up. 35 is pretty good. And then our mix, let's crank it up to like 80. Let's get a real, Get a whole bunch of delay here. Cool. Boosts the signal a lot too, doesn't it? Okay, so the trick with the ambient delay, at least in my, my view, is using delay and reverb together to create these nice atmospheric long trails, you know, where you play a note and it, the note just sustains and, you know, just grows into this like wash of sound. So personally, I don't like too much definite repeats with the delay. I like to use reverb to then fill in the gaps between those repeats so that it just kind of sounds like one long uh, trail. So then if we go here, we'll throw in a reverb and let's have some fun. Let's do the particle verb. This is a really fun reverb to use. Um, doesn't always have a good, a good place um, in most styles, but with this ambient stuff, I say we go for the particle verb. For the settings here, let's tweak them a bit. Let's bring the dwell down, like 60-ish is good. Uh, gain, right around 30. And then the mix, let's bring up a little bit here. Maybe like 85. Okay, let's hear how this is sounding. So already we have a really nice tone going on here. I think one thing I want to add would be some overdrive. So if I go to the distortion tab, pick overdrive. I think this might be a model of an old school, like, I don't know if that's a Boss SD1 or if that's like an old, like a DOD overdrive. Uh, my overdrive trivia is lacking here. Uh, let's bring the drive way down. We just want a little bit of it, like 25-ish. And then output, let's boost this up like maybe 80, close enough. How's this sounding? Mm -hmm. 
sounding pretty ambient. Okay, so this is pretty good. This is a pretty good start. Uh, real basic ambient guitar tone. I had initially made this configuration uh, to work well with picky kind of playing. So like arpeggiated kind of stuff. A lot of ambient stuff has a lot of swells, like volume swells. Um, and so maybe we'll talk about that in a minute, but right now this would be a really good setup uh, if you're doing a lot of like picking kind of playing. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert me playing uh, a little ditty using these settings. So you can kind of hear how they would sound, you know, in an actual song. And then we'll jump back to me here and I'm gonna show you uh, some slightly modified settings to uh, be able to pull off some really awesome ambient volume swells. So uh, enjoy. Okay, so that's a pretty nice start for ambient guitar playing. Um, if you thought that that was too much, like too much reverb or delay, you could always go into your settings and uh, turn the mix level down, turn the feedback level down, um, turn the dwell level down, um, things like that. Or, of course, if you want more, you can turn all those up, which is what we're about to do right now. So if we wanted to uh, rev this setting up more and to have even more sustain, even more uh, ethereal atmospheric sounds. Um, there's a few things that we can do here. So uh, one of the most important things that will change is let's adjust the drive level on our overdrive. Let's bring this drive knob, let's bring it up to 40%. So we're increasing the amount of overdrive, the amount of sound and distortion that that pedal has. Then let's go down to our delay and let's bring the feedback up. Let's bring it way up to like 58, way up to 58. Yeah, like right there. So this is gonna increase the amount of repeats that our delay signal has. So now it's gonna last longer. Then for our reverb settings, Let's take the dwell. We're actually going to pull this down to 29 or 30-ish. There, uh, let's bring the gain up. Let's go to like 86, 85, 86, somewhere around there. Let's do that. And in the mix, let's pull down a little bit. Like 78 is pretty good. Let's hear how some volume swells would sound just using my volume knob on my guitar. Sounds pretty cool, huh? Even though that drive level was turned up on the overdrive pedal, the sound doesn't sound like too overly distorted, I don't think. You know, because we do that initial attack, the initial picking of the string with the volume completely off, and then the string vibrations are already dying down by the time I actually do the volume swell. So you don't really pick up on all that uh, extra overdrive on the pedal. It just simply gives us a little bit extra boost and compression um, just so that our signal lasts longer. 
And just like before, let me uh, play a little demo uh, using these settings so you can hear how these sound uh, with the volume swells. Check it out. Okay guys, there we go. That is my introduction to ambient guitar playing on the Lion 6 Pod HD 500X. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Um, and uh, until next time, see you later.